Uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings. Hope you are wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. We're going to do a guide for noobs today that is actually quite funny at the start, but then it gets very, very sweaty and serious towards the end. And there's going to be a lot to learn here, especially if you're a new player. I want to talk about the personalities of PUBG Mobile. I thirsted that guy. His squad mate is down there. Fox and I are going to make a push. We're actually going to do it pretty much by the numbers. There's only a tiny disconnect between us. A tiny disconnect. And that disconnect is going to be absolutely fatal. You can see I thirsted that guy. His mate is down below us. Now, this is a squad game. We don't actually know whether there's one left, two left, three left. Foxy is 20 meters ahead of me as he goes around this corner. 22 meters. And... I've thrown smokes, and the smoke actually obscures where the guy is. I start shooting at Fox's mark, and I miss him. And he is passionately keen to fur thirst up KR Fox, because we thirsted up his buddy. This is a big part of PUBG Mobile. We all know it. We've all done it. If you've been around for any length of time, you are very, very much comfortable with the fact that if you go in and thirst someone's teammate rather than, you know, winning the gunfight, they're going to thirst your teammate. This is a big issue, a big issue for people. They get very angry about it. And I do too. I get angry about guys like that who thirst rather than have an opportunity to win and clear things. Let's talk now about the next squad that's going to come in. Now, this is a full squad. We're playing on the North American server, I think. Maybe not. We might be on Asia. Uh, no, North American, I think, because this guy's Mexican, I think, one of these dudes. Um, I push this squad house. There are three people in here. You're going to hear a car rotate in very, very shortly. Uh, and I push the squad house because it's late. It's really late here. And I'm playing with Fox because he plays at very odd hours for a North American player. Uh, yet, even though it's late, I'm, I'm just thinking I'll just have some fun. I'll just pick this guy up and I'll try and chuck him off the thing before his mates come up and that doesn't work. I can't throw him up. I can't jump over the edge. So I'm like, oh, screw it. I'll just pre-fire the door and I might clear the last members of this squad. One, two, happy days. And I heard a car pull up. I'm thinking that could be the fourth member of this squad. I was actually very, very seriously considering and I had the chat going with Fox in Discord and I was saying, I might just let these guys live. You know what? I might just let these guys live. Screw it. I'll, I'll pick one up and we'll run around and I'll just let him live. And then he started being abusive in all chat. And I was like, that's a big mistake. I would suggest that if you're in all chat and you've got a guy that isn't thirsting you, do not ever give him crap. Because I guarantee someone can just shoot you and clear you without any danger to themselves and they're not doing it then you give them crap because you were bad at the game or you got beat, you're going to get thirsted. And I was giving them an opportunity to at the very least have a 1v1 with the other bloke. And because they wouldn't, I then decided not to go to bed, but to stay here, clear this squad and go on and win the game. And that's what we're going to try and do. And this is a lovely spray with the AK. You might note that I'm not using any scope on my AK. That is not a mistake. It is completely intentional. I think the iron sights on the AK are the best in game. Let's talk a little bit about entry into compounds. There's a squad or there's a duo in the house next to me here. I don't know that at the time. And they are completely silent. No noise whatsoever. There is a flare drop or an airdrop rather an, an, an air crate drop crate whatever um downstairs you'll see how carefully i'm approaching this house how i'm keeping lines of sight away and it saves my life uh because i'm very much a believer in the concept that people are incredibly passive and conservative in the gameplay and that's true uh i am sometimes passive and conservative when it needs suit me. One of the funniest things about PUBG Mobile is that we're all very quick to judge other people and then play in exactly the same manner. Like, I can't emphasize this enough. You're going to see, as we get towards the final circle, I I get back in my little tent 
and make sure all the doors are shut and I'm very, very safe and sound because it's okay to be aggressive and fun and jumpy around at the beginning, but at the end, I'm going to be super passive and conservative. Well, I mean, that is a bit hypocritical and it's one of the hardest things that I find to get out of my gameplay and I'm still working on getting it out of my gameplay now because attitude is everything in this game, not just because it will help you be successful, but if you've got a good attitude to this stuff and if you recognize and are accountable for this stuff, then you'll be less inclined to be angry at the game and have a poor game experience. And that's what this is at the end of the day. I'm always reminded of Fates when I played with Fates. Now, Fates is a fantastic player. He's another Australian, so he's probably good looking uh, and, and incredibly athletic like me. But... The thing that I found most interesting about Fates was we were playing duos versus squads in FPP. He was, he was going grinding to Conqueror in FPP duos versus squads. And we were playing against the best players on the leaderboard. Um, and we were getting beaten in Pachinki Hot Drops 2v4s. Now, he didn't care. Every time he lost, it was what he did wrong. It wasn't what the other guy got lucky with or what the other guy was you know, cheating or the game or desync. Now, I'm not saying he's an angel. He obviously blows up sometimes like we all do. But I was very, very impressed with the way he was accountable for all these mistakes. And it, if a player that's that good, that's got hundreds of thousands of YouTube subs and has wiped countless Conqueror squad solo, is able to take it on the chin when he gets beaten, then I think... It's a good lesson for me personally and for you as a new player to realize that you're not always going to be the best and that sometimes you'll just get beat because the other guy did it better or is more talented than you are. I can't emphasize this enough. It's a credo to live by. I don't do it enough and I've gone away from it lately and I'm physically working on getting back towards that. It's one of the reasons why it can be very frustrating for people who like to play aggressively when they play duos or solos because people there are just incredibly conservative. Now, I've got one kill on this guy and it's notable that he did not come downstairs to try to revive his teammate and he's just holding an angle up the top. That's his right. He's allowed to play the game however he sees fit. Everyone is allowed to play the game the way they want to play the game. And trying to impose your gameplay style on someone else is only going to upset you. Trust me on this, because I get upset about it all the time, and I still have to work through this crap. His mate had an AWM, so we take that, and we're holding here. I'm looking at my medical supplies. I really want all his meds. And his friend is still up top, not moving. Not moving a single centimeter, which is, you know, this is how it's going to be. I've got a choice. I can push in the blue against a guy that I know has a Graza. I know he has a Graza because I heard him firing it off when uh, his mate was trying to pitch grenades up the top. Or I can lay smokes for myself to exit the situation and actually get to the next area. And that's what I'm going to do. And this is one of the reasons why I can't really get upset at this guy for holding an angle. Because while he is holding an angle, I am also not willing to go forward and do battle while he has a huge advantage. I want him to be at a disadvantage. This is the ethos of PUBG Mobile. If you're in a 1v1 situation, you don't want to give the other guy an upper hand because neither of us can win the game right here. All we can do is lose it. If I go in to push him, I might win, I might not. If I win, I get to fight someone else in another circle in just a second. The far better play here and the play that I'm about to make is to leave. I'm going to smoke myself, I'm going to smoke him, and I'm going to smoke the exit point to that door just behind me for the small shack. I'm going to go around, get through the two stack, get in my car, go down the hill where it limits his visibility and line of sight and lets me go as fast as I possibly can. And I'm going to get through to the next circle and live. I know a lot of this stuff is obvious when you've been playing the game for a long time. But newer players have to think this stuff through before it becomes second nature. And what we're doing here is trying to put an old head on young shoulders. Now, it's not possible. It can't be done. But you can basically give people a little bit of an idea so that they can learn for themselves a little faster. 
if, if we improve people and give them a better gaming experience, then at the end of the day, we've had a win. Again, I'm going below the hill. This limits the sight lines and it makes it very hard because there's little railings on top of that balcony, which means it's a bugger to try and spray from. Trust me, this is something I've done many times. We're going to pull in down here, get into a little shack and uh, met up, think up and get across. Now, we're actually going to swim across. I'm not going to show that because that's not a big deal. But I will point out that when we swim across, I actually take my car and I go 100% into the water to go as far into the water as possible and then swim from there. And we swim, you can see my car if you look in the mini map, is in the middle of the river, which is very, very cool. We are going to find the guy with the grazer. He's just behind us and uh, he's going to feature. You'll hear him in the kill feed in a second. Uh, and this is a big part of why you should never hurry. We've got 10 kills. We've got five left alive. We're on the absolute edge of the circle. The only way someone can come up on us is if they swim through the water or run along the edge. There he is. That was the Graza. Uh, we're going to get a hit. We get up just in time for a second shot, but we fall off the edge. We're going to molly the rock he's on. He is hurt. That is an AWM. He just got hit for at least 70 damage, so he can't even take a tick of the mollies. He's out. We go back to our safe space and we rotate in late on the circle. I like rotating in late on the circle when there's only two left because it's very, very hard for anyone to get a hold of you. That guy's bot calling. He's bot calling. I know he's bot calling, which is really dumb this late. Really dumb this late because this is now, he's giving me, I would never have seen him. I mean, that is an incredibly unlikely place to have seen and I would have had to rotate in from there anyway. And the sweat here is immense. It takes another three or four minutes for me just to get to the other side of the compound. And we're just about at the very, very last ebb here. And I've cut down all the angles. I've pushed in. He has to be over here, right? He's been throwing greens, throwing mollies. He's got to be lying down or behind this slight ridge. And that's exactly where he is. And I'm going to be looking here. And uh, again, I'm very, very, very conservative here. I'm going to get shots on him. He's going to get a shot on me. I'm thinking he must be in that little tree. Somewhere around there. I'm just looking for movement. Saw a little head dip over there. Get a head shot, body shot. Cop a couple of shots back. That's fine. Pull back, get a heal. And move even closer. I can cancel this heal at any time. He's a lot worse uh, off than I am hurt in terms of being hurt. There he is. He's lying in the grass. And we get the kill. That was a really interesting game for me through a lot of different facets. We did over 2k damage and we were ready We were ready to pull the pin on that when I had three people knocked up top. And Foxy was like, oh yeah, just let these guys live. We'll go and play another game. And then that guy started abusing me. And this is a game played by people. And if you give people crap uh, when they're in an opportunity to finish you off and you can't help it, then you're going to get thirsted. You're going to get knocked. You're going to get screwed. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Look after yourselves. Uh, stay safe on the battlefield. As always, it's a pleasure having you here. Uh, and I was just trying to recreate where he was there. I wasn't sure where he was. But anyway, we figured it out in the end. Um, yeah. Bye for now. And uh, see you real soon. Au revoir.